Hello, I'm Darren Wood, and we're going to look at an overview of Cubase 9's new transport panel. I've just downloaded this this morning, just upgraded from 8.5. And uh, what I'm going to do, let's, let's open up an empty project. We've got a new project. Now, the first thing I noticed was the transport down the bottom of the page. If you want the original transport back, you can switch it on with F2 on the keyboard or in the normal place, uh, transport panel, and it opens up there. Now, the problem with the old transport was sometimes when you had a complicated project or a lot of tracks, it used to get in the way. Sometimes it is nice to have that familiar view. So, like I said, if you want to turn it on and off, uh, F2 it on your keyboard. But uh, for now, I'm going to see how I get on with the one at the bottom because most of the time I use the numeric keyboard with enter to start, zero to stop, and zero to stop again, and you, you go back to where you first started from. And then you got the asterisk star key to drop it in record and press it again, and it drops out record and carries on playing. So I use that most of the time anyway. So yeah, it's generally nice to see what's going on when you press these buttons and uh, when you drop it in record and drop it out and stuff like that. You can see what you're doing. Now I've customised this, this bottom bar because there was too much on it to start with. And the way you customise it is using the uh, cog wheel here, which is the tools. And as you can see, you can turn various things on or off. Let's just select all to start with. Now, as you can see, there's, there's quite a lot of clutter now. now if you're not going to use all that, then you don't need it there all the time. Okay, so if we open up the old transport, okay, it's quite mapped out quite nice. And it's familiar, so you know where, where things are, like you punch in, punch out, locators, um, bars, beats, and so on, and uh, your time display, and tempo. Now, you just need to get used to what you arrange down the bottom here, where you want to place them. Uh, now, I don't normally use the punch in, punch out settings very often. So what I did, I, I got rid of them and uh, got rid of few, various few other things as well. And the way I, you can do that is click on the cog, get rid of the things you don't want. And then once you've got that set, go to setup. Setup box will come up. And in the list of what you didn't want will be hidden. And then you can click a preset and give it a name and save it. Now I've already done that, so if I call my one up, you can see I've got one called Daz, short for Darren. And if we click on that, you can see that things have, have disappeared. Okay, so if we go back into there again now and go to Setup, as you can see, I've, I've hidden the uh, punch points and also the pre-roll, uh, post-roll as well. You can just get them back when you want to use them, really. And then I, I saved that as DAS, clicked OK. Now, because it's already in use, I'm just going to overwrite that. OK, I didn't actually make any changes there, but I, I just overwrote it anyway. A couple of things to bear in mind on, on the bottom here. You've got these little um, dots which can be moved around. So you can hide things out the way and also resize things so they look a bit different. So you can see the time signatures disappeared when you pull that. And let's have a look. And again, as you can see, you lose your secondary time display when you pull it this way. Same over here. You've got a MIDI record mode and you can change the settings quite easily just by clicking down the bottom there. Uh, if you hide that out the way, you can still access it there. So as long as you know where it is, and the same over here as well. This is the punch in, punch out, how it behaves, okay? So let's just hide that again. Over here, I'm just going to explain this again. So as you can see, you've got some uh, dividers, left divider, which we just looked at, and uh, where are we? Right divider, which is this bit here. 
So um, you can obviously turn them on and off. They sort of snapped more to the middle, but I think it's quite nice having them on the edge. So I'm going to turn that back on. Again, with Cubase, hover your mouse around anything, and it tells you what things do anyway. So it's the MIDI output activity. And then you got the audio activity uh, on the main mix output. Okay, so that, that shows you briefly what's going on there. And here, if you've got your control room set up, this will alter the uh, output of the control room. If you haven't, it will alter the output of the master fader. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at that a minute. So we go to devices, and we want to go to uh, VST connections, and let's have a look. Because I've just upgraded from Cubase 8.5, what I had to do was open an old project uh, into Cubase 9 with the VST connections already set up and then save the presets again and then close the old project so I could keep the same presets from Cubase 8.5 so as you can see I've only got a stereo input here but when I load the preset I saved from previously which is DAS I get my audio cards inputs back again so I can have all of them there uh, how I used to have it set up before same with the output I've only got stereo out here, and if I go to DAS, I get it the way again it was set up before. And also the same with Studio Control Room as well. Um, it seems to be okay now, but let's just load the DAS one in. It's going to take a bit longer, that one. Okay, that's done, and it's on as well. So let's just have a look at that then. So we click on the E. And let's just see if that moves around when I do this. Turn that down. Disappeared now, so I don't know why that disappeared. But it, as you can see, that is controlling that. Just like here as well. Okay, and I'd like to have it on zero. Now, the problem with it down here is if you do accidentally move it, and you, you want to get back to zero again, you can't double click and do that. Same as the old transport bar, you can't double click it, which is a bit of a shame. I normally like to double click something, add a zero in and press enter and it goes back to zero. Now, obviously, if we go to our control room mixer, get that out of the way, you can do it here and it does it sets it for you. So double click, enter zero, and it resets it. So you just got to be aware of that. Um, if you nudge it there, <laughs> um, it's actually you have to. You can reset it here because it's it's a bit fiddly to do it with a mouse. It doesn't snap properly. So you have to double click and enter zero. Let's just close these down a minute. So if you want to remove that or hide it more, really hide it really is click on the dots and just sort of drag that to the left and one more time so that little dot disappears that's actually the volume handle one more time there and that's disappeared and I think that's really probably all, all I changed really there so that is the uh, trans new transport part which is hooked on the bottom of your arrangement window ah just, just one other thing I wanted to say if you actually don't want this here you can actually turn it off and if we go to um, this section up here, which is show hide lower zone, which is a new feature that's they've actually added a lower zone. You can I think if you go to there and click on the little down arrow, you can turn off the transport area as well. So just de click that and it disappears and click it again and it appears. But for, like I said, for now, I'm going to keep it on and see how we get on. So that was just one of the new features I found in Cubase 9, the transport window at the bottom. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel or give me a thumbs up, please do so at the bottom here. I'm Darren Wood. Thank you for watching and hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next one.